What's up all you black belt Google Foo masters? This is John Ramos Solutions 8 and today I'm going to be discussing what sort of method you should be using to track purchases on your e-commerce store in Google Ads. I wanted to shoot this video because nine times out of ten when we take on a new client what they've done is imported their analytics goal into Google Ads and that's what they're using to track. That's how, what they're using to track all their conversion value and their sales and attribution to the to the proper um, campaign that was being used when that when that transaction took place. And I think I have a better way to do it, and I wanted to share this with you. Uh, it's a fairly common method, but for some reason, not everyone seems to use it, especially um, the last probably 20 or 30 clients we've taken on. Um, they've not used this, and this is something that I wanted to kind of show you what the discrepancy can be and why you'd want to use Google Tag Manager instead of Analytics in order to track your conversions inside of Google Ads. So let's begin. So you'll see here there's two conversion actions in this account. One is called orders and the other one is called transactions. And the orders is coming from the website, transactions is, become, is coming from analytics. Now you can see that we only included one in conversions, otherwise we'd be duplicating our transactions and that's never a good idea. You only wanna you know, include the uh, conversions that you know are accurate and that you wanna track. So make sure they don't, if you do decide to do this method, turn off the one that is gonna be inaccurate and that's gonna be from analytics. But from the July 1st through September 22nd, both attribution models are using first click. They're both a purchase. One is coming from Google Tag Manager from the website conversion, and the other one is being imported from analytics. And look at the difference. Uh, if you look at from July 1st through September 22nd, you have 1,118 conversions here, 1,118 sales, and 944 sales here. And then the conversion value is 54,500 versus 43,800. I mean, I'm just kind of rounding down. But this is a difference of about you know, $11,000, uh, or almost $11,000, about $10,800. Um, so almost $11,000 difference between the two. Now, that's a big difference when you're talking about you know, from 43 to 54. That's, that's a, probably about a 20% difference. And it's really imperative that if you're using you know, target CPA or if you're using uh, sorry, um, um, target return on ad spend or maximize conversion value, uh, any of the bidding strategies that are going to be majorly affected by this amount here, you want to make sure that this number is very accurate. If you had a 400% ROAS goal, for example, uh, so where you're making four times your money back, this could be the difference of a make or break campaign. And you might actually be making more money here, 54,000, than what you actually think, which is 43,800. Now, let's look at the actual, this number here though, inside of Google, or sorry, Google Analytics. From July 1st through September 22nd, we look at July 1st through September 22nd, oh, I popped up over here, let me bring these back down there. Um, you'll see that there's 50,000 and 1,106. So the paid search category, which is the, you know, where Google Ads is coming from, it's not social, direct or anything, um, but it's 50,000 in, in sales here. Now, why is this 50,000 and this 43,000? Well, since Google Ads and Google Analytics run off of different attribution models. We like to look at the first click model because the reason the reason why I like first click is we do a lot of heavy outbound shopping ads via smart shopping, and it's hundreds of thousands, sometimes even in the millions of impressions and tens of thousands of clicks for very, very few pennies. So I wanna make sure that if someone's gonna come back and Google a brand name, I can properly attribute it to the correct campaign. Now, this is first click um, attri attributed to the proper campaign but Google Analytics is last click or even same day attributed. They'll just say, hey, between this period and this period, this is what happened that day. And Google Ads is saying, yes, but the click actually came from before that time period or the sale actually came in from after that time period. And it's going to properly attribute the actual amount of value that the campaign actually brought in. So while this says 54.5, Analytics will say 50. And then the other um, 4,000 is probably sprinkled in between direct and organic. Um, you know, they chose a different method to go back to the site to convert. And analytics won't see that. They'll just see, well, someone came directly to the site and purchased, like you see here. Um, this, is, this is important because if you look at direct traffic, this is people who are physically typing in a URL and are going to the uh, website and then buying. And now that has $74,000 since July 1st or yep, July 1st, and you think, well, that can't be right. How people are just not waking up one day and then just finding my URL and typing it in directly and, and, and visiting me, what's actually going on? And it's because Google Analytics 
doesn't have a, a good string of multiple session or multiple device uh, visits before transaction. Google Ads using Google Tag Manager does a very good job at that. So when we look here, this says, according to analytics, there was 16,882 users, 16,217 were new. Mm, that's that's kind of hard to imagine that there's only 600 people who have been to my website before that know how to just type in my website directly. And this website here is not a common uh, uh, URL that you can probably just think of off the top of your head. So this is why this does a really bad job at tracking multi um, session, multi device visits, uh, and then simply just erases it by source and says, well, there's been 16,000 new people that just found your website and purchased. Congratulations. You don't want to rely on analytics to be your, your eyeballs, especially when you have multiple campaigns and you really need to know what campaign is influencing what. So when you use the Google tag manager, the conversion tracking here, this will help us identify what was the first click, what was the first keyword that was searched, what first campaign ad group keyword and ad was used when they first went to my website, what did they do else after that, and did they come back and convert via Google Ads, and if so, what campaign, or if they didn't, if they came back and uh, converted uh, organically or directly, what um, what was the what was the end result of that? So it's a way for you not to simply miss out on 20% of your conversions. I've seen it up to like 40% conversions where people have influencers, social media, a lot of remarketing, running ad roll, Google remarketing, Instagram, Facebook remarketing, a lot of different channels that are hitting them at once. Uh, and then they come through and check out via PayPal. And so it looks like, oh, it's a referral network from the PayPal network. Um, so using uh, Google Tag Manager, you get to kind of bypass all of that all of those broken systems and strung together platforms and Google Tag Manager simply just follows that user and says, I don't really care where you go, I'm watching you. And then whatever it does is, aha, you purchased on this day, but the click came from that day and that's what took place. So I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you use Google Tag Manager instead of just importing an analytics goal. Importing an analytics goal is fast, it's simple, it's easy, um, and it's like a one-click setup, but you're gonna be 20% off. And so sometimes the, the hard work pays off. Uh, this is John Moran with Solutions 8. If you like these videos, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Um, tell your aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, cousins, neighbors, dogs, all the good stuff. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.